Chris Harmon has been a Goose Creek City Councilman for the past year. Now he's asking residents of Goose Creek to give him a full term as a writing candidate. I speak exclusively to Chris for this edition of Quentin's Close-Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Close-Ups on Facebook. Christopher Harmon, welcome to Quentin's Close-Ups. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me, and I'm happy to be here. Oh, you're very welcome. Glad to hear that. Obviously, you are a current uh, Goose Creek Council member, and I understand now, as you see right behind you, you are a, a writing candidate for re-election. Tell me, why Chris Harmon? Why re-election? Uh, I've, I've served for a year and a half after winning a special election, and I'm looking forward to, to winning this election and serving a full term so I can help get Goose Creek to where we need to be. As a matter of fact, let me take you to the issues. Mayor Greg Habib said this recently, quote, there are small businesses in and around the city of Goose Creek who supply to Century Aluminum. One particular that comes to mind, it's a very significant part of his business. So while he isn't an employee there, his business is very reliant upon Century Aluminum. What other Goose Creek businesses are reliant upon Century? Uh, I'm not exactly sure of every other business that's relying on Century, but I believe most importantly are the employees at Century Aluminum and then Century Aluminum is, itself. Um, you know, we, we tried uh, very diligently to serve Century Aluminum electricity through electric utility that we attempted to pass, and we gained ground on that. But recently, we were told that that is not, you know, something we can do per the judge of South Carolina. So we are kind of regrouping. Uh, we were able to annex some property around Century Aluminum, and we gave it our best effort to, to save Century Aluminum's plant and those jobs, not only saving the 300 jobs, but attempting to add 300 more. Um, and that's something we really want to see, and, and we still are kind of figuring out our next step. Now, how much uh, property has the city annexed around that particular area? Uh, it's about 800 acres, give or take a few. Yeah. Okay. And let me ask you this, too. Uh, obviously, uh, Century Aluminum officials said that they sent a notice to the employees that the plant could close on December 31st of this year unless they can, quote, secure a competitively priced power arrangement. What arrangement is ideal price-wise for the city of Goose Creek? Uh, you know, I think for us, we were hoping to form this electric utility and then take whatever costs that we incurred and, and wrap those into the price for Century Aluminum uh, to, to both cover the cost of electricity and our operational cost. Um, so I don't have an exact number, but it was something that was going to be lower than the Santee Cooper uh, price point and, and, like I said, hopefully allow them to cut their operational costs so they could continue doing business in our city. And Mr. Mayor explained that the city has already communicated with unemployment, with the unemployment commission, that is. He said the city will continue to evaluate the options for the Mount Holly plant. He says the loss could affect the Goose Creek economy. What options have city council been privy to? Uh, you know, I don't know of any exact options at this point, except for to continue to, to, to see if there's a way to get through this process and to serve them the electricity, um, you know, that's kind of where I stand now. And, and we, like I said, we gave a good effort and we hope that that's still a possibility and a, a, to get them uh, to keep the doors open. But uh, at the moment, we're kind of at a standstill. And let me get to the other side. Santee Cooper said this to Channel 4, quote, we estimate it would take about $270 million in 68 years to replace the capacity you now want and increase our operating costs $80 million to as much as $160 million over time, of obviously the time frame, all costs that would have been shifted and borne to by the other customers for the sole purpose of benefiting Century. What's that capacity? Yeah, I, you know, I, I don't know all the details for Santee Cooper's side of the, the business and, and kind of what they speak to, so, you know, I don't want to get into that, but, but I think, you know, ultimately our goal is to help businesses survive, and, and I think, you know, that's ultimately Santee Cooper's uh, goal also, and you know, we tried to help on our side the most we, we, we could, and uh, that just unfortunately did not work. And I hope that maybe Santee Cooper and Century Aluminum could, could strike a deal and, and figure something out so they can they can stay, you know, above water. And, you know, from there, I, I don't have, you know, much insight on, on their operations. And this might be an uh, interesting question, Christopher, but what cost is it the city's foresee customers paying? Uh, you, know, you know, as far as the customers, you mean our residential uh, yes. You know, there wouldn't be, we would be only be serving Century Aluminum and any future industrial companies that came onto that property. So, okay. you know, we were under the impression and we still believe that there would not be an increase in cost for the residential customers. Uh, so if we did supply Century Aluminum electricity and took off the uh, kind of the grid for Santee Cooper, we did not believe that that would increase costs for our residential community in Goose Creek. 
Yes, sir. And I hope to get the Mr. Billy B back on Quentin's close up soon to talk more about this in depth. But let me go back to your reelection. Uh, you posted this, uh, this posted this actually on your Facebook page. You said this quote. Hello, my name is Christopher Harmon. I'm running for reelection as a write-in candidate for city council in the city of Goose Creek. Let me re be redundant here. Why Christopher Harmon? Why write-in candidate? Yeah, so, you know, I'm, there's a few places you can go to find a filing period. The Berkeley County Commission, you can find it in the newspaper, and also the state, uh, South Carolina State Commission. I, I've gone in the last previous elections, I've gone to the South Carolina Election Commission site to find my filing period. Unfortunately, they had the wrong dates listed on that website. So I was misunderstood when the dates were. I had those in my calendar. I went back and rechecked those dates on that website numerous times. They stayed the same. Unfortunately, I missed that filing period. So it left me in a position to either not run or run as a write-in. Right mm -hmm. So I decided to push forward as a write-in, and that's that's why I'm a write-in. As far as why you know me and why another four years, or excuse me, why a full term, I've only served a year and a half. Right. I think Goose Creek's at a, a very critical point with growth, and we need to invest in the quality of life for our residents in Goose Creek. And what I see is investing in green space and building parks and connectivity with sidewalks and trails and, and along those green space, we need amphitheater. We need a farmer's market. We need a, a, a significant central park with a splash pad and, uh, you know, things that can bring our community together so we can help the businesses around that central park. And I believe if you did invest, if we invested in ourselves and our community, that would lead growth down the road for entrepreneurs and business and, and one thing my goal would be is that Central Park kind of connects into the triangle 176 and 52. Right. There's old shopping centers in that triangle. And I think that we could get attention of a developer to come in and, and redevelop one of those shopping centers, if not that whole unit over time. Um, and I think we have a zoning for three levels. The first level could be uh, businesses. It could maybe be a full service hotel. The second could be, you know, the insurance company or the, the tax company. And the third could even be residential, the third level. And I think that would give some density. And I think we could possibly create a town center similar to a next center, a park circle, and allow our community to come together, uh, participate in events, and then also walk into a walkable town center and, and provide support for our businesses. And I think that is where we are in our growth. And coming up is a comprehensive plan, which right. we've already thoughtfully started. Right. And this is the, the perfect time to implement some of those ideas and get things moving forward so we can have a better Goose Creek. Now, you talk about these town centers and green spates and parks. How much will this actually cost the average taxpayer in Goose Creek? Yeah, so my goal would never be to raise taxes. But I think what you do is you have to invest in yourself. We can't allow business growth to take all of our green space and we're left with nothing but strip mall and apartment complex and neighborhood with no place for our community to come together. So our opportunity, our investment cost would be for the buying some of the real estate. So there's a few that we already own some real estate in the central park area. We have the Eubanks park, which we're going to redevelop. Right. So those lots we already own, there's a few lots around those parcels that we could possibly invest in. Even on Henry Brown there, we're building, you know, the suburban sprawl of neighborhoods. And I think it's reasonable to invest in real estate around our city strategically so that we can have the opportunity to, to build on that later, whether it's a park or, or, or even if it's just, you know, green space. And I think, as far as a town center, we don't build that. That's a developer. But I think if we invest in ourselves and create attention, then the development will come in, and that's a private industry. Uh, for us, our investment in parks, real estate, we can afford. Um, and then the park is an investment. We are building a park now that we're paying cash for off 52 in the Boulder Bluff neighborhood where the old Dennis Park used to be. Uh, so moving forward, you know, we would have to invest some money. But this is a long-term approach. This is 10, 20, 30-year vision for where our city not only wants to be today, but where we need to be in future generations. Now, let me ask you this. When those developers do come, what incentives do they do you want them to bring to the neighborhoods? Um, you know, the incentives I want them to bring to the neighborhood is, is the community of Goose Creek. Not only do we need places for our own hometown businesses to set up shop, but we also need places that we can go and spend our money and to keep our money within Goose Creek. So, you know, if you've been to Next End, they have a beautiful setup. They have an amphitheater in the middle of that. They have, you know, you bring one good restaurant and then you get competition with another good restaurant. And so these are places that we can go as Beach Creek residents, have fun with our family, spend a little bit of money that goes back into our city. And this gives our residents a place to, to eat and to, to play and to socialize. Yes, sir. And what exactly is the quality of life right now? Uh, you know, I think the quality of life has is, is been improving and, and our goal is to continue and improve that quality of life. I think certain cities, sometimes we get, we, we put growth ahead of 
quality of life. And I think it has to be a balance. And we have to invest in ourselves as a city to provide these spaces for us to, like I said, come together. You know, if you talk about an amphitheater, a place to have host an event, we have local artists, we have local musicians that could very well play there. Uh, Stratford Goose Creek High School has bands that could come and set up shop and, and, and perform for us. Um, so I think those things enhance the quality of life. Uh, I think right now we do have quality of life, but there's always room for an improvement. And if we don't take these steps now, I'm afraid that we'll miss this opportunity and we will become kind of a, you know, a city as other cities are. And we want to set ourselves apart and take it to the next level in Goose Creek. And I know this might be a redundant uh, question, Mr. Harmon, but how do you plan growth with smart growth? Uh, so I think the comprehensive plan is the, the blueprint for growth. And I think if you bring people together, you ask your residents, you ask professionals and consultants. We have a planning commission that has expertise on our planning commission, our planning director. So we lean into all those resources. We look from a bird's eye view and we make sure that we have a connected city. And, and like a, it takes strategic investment on our part. And then we have to guide growth. So we have appropriate zoning ordinances set in place so that growth can can come to certain areas so i think it takes a, a multitude of organizations or, or expertise to come together to form this plan um and you know i talk about the central part of goose creek a lot uh, we have the southern part of goose creek the red bank area and even behind goose creek primary school we, we have a park there that we a foster creek park uh you know we're a city that is called goose creek and we don't have access to the goose creek reservoir i think having access to that Goose Creek Reservoir to, to drop a kayak or to have access to the water for fishing. I think those things, yes, they're an investment. It doesn't have to happen today, but such investments create attraction to our city, not only for our residents, for also for outsiders to come visit our city and to spend money. Another thing is up 176, right. where we also annex land from Century Aluminum. On one side, we have some uh, residential growth, some uh, apartments, some condominiums. And I think we would be intelligent to invest in some property there also for possibly a future sports complex that we may need 10, 20 years down the road. I'm not saying it has to be built today, but if we look 20 years down the road and we can invest in the property today before it's bought by other developers, there's potential to have something like a sports complex to not only for our recreational department, but to draw in other uh, you know, sports teams and, and have tournaments there. And that would give us the ability to draw people to this town center and they could spend money. And on that sports complex, you can have a youth center, a place for our youth to come together that not aren't necessarily sports focused, but they have other interests, the arts and uh, you know other things. So we have to make sure that we have places for our community to come together. And we can also draw outsiders to our community so they can spend time in our city and they can stay in our hotel and they can spend money in our town center. So it's, like I said, it, it's some investments are for today, but some are for, 10, 20 years down the road, and we have to think about where those would be today and set up, preserve land for that future growth. Now, how is COVID impacting these investments? Um, you know, I, I don't think our, our tax revenue has stayed fairly, uh, you know, flat. It hasn't decreased, hasn't sharply increased like the year previous, but you know, there is some uncertainty in the future. So I understand your question. Um, I think we still have to plan as if COVID isn't here. You know, COVID is obviously a problem, but that should not stop us from planning for future growth and for future opportunities. So um, I think we, we take it into consideration. We make sure that we are able to continue to have the tax revenue we need to support our basic services as a city, but we still plan for bigger ideas in the future. And that was my question, uh, Christopher. What policies would you update to make Goose Creek more fiscally responsible? Um, you know, I think, I believe in a lean government and I, I believe in the 80-20 principle, Pareto's law. And, and what that is, is, is you, you invest and you focus on the 20% of things that create 80% of your value. And so I think I would focus on that, you know, focus on the most important things that create value for our city. And uh, fiscal responsibility is, it does connect with investing in yourself and controlling the things that you have control over. So I would focus on a lean government. I would focus on the 20% of things that create 80% of our revenue. And I would get rid of the 80% of things or not necessarily get rid of, but I would look to mitigate the 80% of things that only create 20% of our revenue or the 20% of things that create 80% of our headaches. So I would, I would use that platform to, to look at policy that would make us more uh, stable.
Well, let me ask you this. When you look at the budget right now, what could you take out? You know, I believe that the, our, our budget is fairly lean. And when you comb through that budget, there's not a lot of opportunities to cut costs. I think that we have the resources that we need to, to pay our employees appropriate wage, to invest in our city. So I don't think there's anything glaring or, or standing out that I'd say, you know, you could cut this and save a million dollars a year. I, I don't honestly see those. There's some small areas where you could possibly debate about cutting $20,000 or $30,000 here, but it's not a, you know, $2 million wasted money sitting over here that we can just ax. I, I don't think we have that issue in Goose Creek. We run a tight uh, budget and, and our, uh, our leadership does a great job for seeing that budget stay stable. And as a matter of fact, you said we have an excellent staff that deals with the day-to-day -day operations of our city. I will provide the appropriate oversight to make sure those efforts are ethical and practical. What oversight is ethical and practical right now in the city? Well, I just think, you know, being diligent and, and understanding that our administration does a great job and we hire them to, to handle the day-to-day -day operations of our city. Our job as a council is to implement policy and to provide a vision for the future. In addition to that, it's to make sure that there's ethical operations happening in our city. So make sure that money is going where it's supposed to go, make sure people are doing their jobs. So those are things that we have to, to make sure we do. We have to you know, participate in the budget process, not only during the, the budget meetings in, in October and November, but throughout the year to make sure that our monies are uh, you know, appropriated in the right fashion and make sure that you know, our administration is, is providing uh, the right services for our city. And they have done that and they continue to do that. And uh, we have the people in place to, to do the right job ethically. And you prefaced this on Facebook, but you basically said, hey, if effective people are not problem minded, they're opportunity minded. They feed opportunities and solve problems. What opportunities have you fed and what problems have you solved off? Uh, you know, I believe that the opportunities that I want to feed are, are investing in our, our infrastructure. The things that I mentioned connecting our city with the appropriate sidewalks, pedestrian crosswalks across 52, a connection from Henry Brown to the central part of our, our city, a connection from Carnes, which we need a bike trail to come to, to our central part of our city, uh, Boulder Bluff, working on a sidewalk for the children to walk safely to school, investing in the Boulder Bluff Park. Those are opportunities that we have control over. Uh, other things that we, we don't are, are um, you know, when they come across, we kind of know what they are, but I, I don't have any specific ideas for, for starving off the problems. But I just think we have to make sure that we focus on the things that we can control and the things that add value to our city. The other, uh, you know, things that we don't necessarily have control over, I, I don't believe that we should invest a lot of energy and time and money in those those things. And you all said this too, I will strive to be the best leader possible and will bother to learn continually in order to serve Goose Creek the best. What have you learned over the past year since being a Goose Creek councilman? Well, yeah, I definitely think it's a it's a complex job, and there's a lot of uh, it's multifactored about how to approach a city council job. The multi, uh, the municipal association of South Carolina offers classes, and I've, I've participated in those classes to learn more about my government role, um, and just being part of something for a year and a half. I think it's you know it takes about that long to kind of get your feet settled and, and, and get an understanding of how the government works and 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 how to you know get things to the agenda and how to how to handle a city council meeting and how to handle the, the public and how to handle different agencies around the, the region. So I think that's been something to, that I've learned um, just kind of who's who, yes. you know, what my process is and, and, and how to, to implement change. And one thing is the government doesn't move at the speed of light. It, it, it's a, it's a patient process and you have to, you have to be patient and you have to continue to, to strive towards your goals and, and uh, be respectful to your, other council members and the, the residents around you. And we're not always going to agree, but I, I think it's important to, to show up, have healthy debate and, and to continue to move the, the process forward every day. Chris Harmon, thank you so much for your time. And again, welcome to Quentin's Close-Ups. Thank you for having me, Quentin. I've enjoyed it and uh, take care of yourself. Likewise.